Okay, the topic we are going to talk about now is going to be the heart. So the heart is a very important organ which job is to pump the blood throughout our body. Okay, so let's take a look at the overview of the cardiovascular system. So we know that the heart is responsible for pumping the blood to the lungs in order to get the oxygen and to remove the carbon dioxide and from there to pump the blood towards the body. Okay, so therefore there are two different types of circulation. One of them is going to be the pulmonary circulation and the other one is going to be the systemic circulation. The heart is located in the middle of the uh, thoracic cavity in a space called the mediastinum. As you can see in here, that's the space it occupies and it's located in between the two lungs. So obviously in here as well, you see it's located more or less in the middle in the mediastinum. The heart obviously has a very close relationship with the lungs and because of that the heart is covered by a membrane called the pericardium. The pericardium has two layers, one is a parietal pericardium and the other one is a visceral pericardium. And in between the two layers you have fluid. That space that you have in between the two membranes is going to be called the pericardial cavity. And in between the two layers you're going to put fluid and that's the pericardial fluid. Let's go to the next topic. In this case you have gross anatomy of the heart. So the heart has three layers which are going to compose the heart wall. It has the epicardium, the myocardium, and the endocardium. Here's the heart, I obviously cut in half, and you can see clearly in here the uh, three layers. This is going to be the one on the inside, this is going to be the endocardium, the one in the middle is going to be the myocardium, and the one on the outside is going to be the epicardium. The heart, as you can see in here, it has four chambers, two on the top, one here and another here. Both of them are going to be called atriums. This is going to be the right atrium. This is going to be the left atrium. Then you have other two cavities at the bottom. This is going to be the left ventricle and this is going to be the right ventricle. So there's a communication right here between the atriums and the ventricles and there's communication right here between the atrium and the ventricle. In this case, this is for the left side, this is for the right side. This communication that you have in here is covered by a valve. This type of valve is a unidirectional valve, meaning it will allow the blood to go only in one direction, usually from the top atrium to the bottom ventricle. When the ventricle contracts in order to pump the blood, the valve will close and it will not open, therefore not allowing the blood to go back up, but rather to go in just one direction outside the heart in this case. So how come the valve is able to withstand the pressure produced by the ventricle so the blood cannot go back up to, for example, the left atrium. That happens because the valves are connected to this area right here, which are called the tendinous cords or cordy tendine. You can also see it right here. And these are fibers that are going to be attached to the muscle of the heart. And this part of the muscle of the heart that looks like a mountain, these are going to be the papillary muscles. The papillary muscle using this cordy tendine will give the strength to the valve so the valve does not open when the ventricle, in this case the, the left ventricle, pumps the blood towards your body. The heart has four chambers, one, two, three, and four. And these chambers are separated by these walls. This is the interventricular septum. It separates both ventricles. And right here you have the interatrial septum. So there is a blood vessel right here getting into the left atrium. There's another one that gets into the right atrium. You have a blood vessel that is going to take the blood from the right ventricle. And there's going to be another blood vessel that is going to take the blood from the left ventricle. If you scroll down, you can clearly see there are four blood vessels. One right here, two. You have another one here, three. You have another one right here, four. So there are four chambers. In the case of the right atrium, you're going to have the superior vena cava and the inferior vena cava. The left atrium, you're going to see that you have the pulmonary veins. You have two right here and two right here. So there are four pulmonary veins. Then if you look at the left ventricle, then you have this blood vessel, this big one right here, which is going to be the aorta. And if you look at the right ventricle, now you're going to see this big blood vessel right here, which is the pulmonary trunk that eventually is going to divide in order to give you the left pulmonary artery and the right pulmonary artery. So those are the blood vessels that you have inside the heart. So right here also you can see again the same thing. You have in here the, the superior inferior vena cava, the pulmonary veins, the left pulmonary artery, right pulmonary artery, and the aorta. So there you go. You have one, two, three three, four main blood vessels going to each chamber. The heart is going to have blood vessels to provide them with blood. These blood vessels are going to be the coronary arteries. Okay, you have the right coronary artery and the left coronary artery. Those provide the blood with oxygen to the heart. How the blood comes back to the heart with the carbon dioxide, it's going to be done mainly using the coronary sinus. 
que as we mentioned, the heart has multiple layers and we already talked about the epicardium, endocardium, and myocardium. The myocardium is basically the muscle, right? The cardiac muscle. So if you scroll down, you can see here the myocardial vortex, which shows that when the heart contracts, actually contracts in a way that produces a twisting motion when you pump the blood outside the heart. If you scroll down, you can see here the valves that we were talking about. This is the valve on the right side. It's called tricuspid valve. And you have it on the right side, which is sometimes referred as to the mitral valve. So this is for the left side and this is for the right side. So you have two valves in there. But something else to mention is that the aorta also has a valve. And the pulmonary valve belongs to the pulmonary trunk. So there are actually four valves in your heart. Two that belong to the main blood vessels, aorta and pulmonary trunk and two that belongs to the areas of communication between the atriums and the ventricles. You can clearly see here the valves. As we said, the valves are going to have certain strength in order to withstand the pressure coming from the ventricles. And we said that the valves obtain this strength because they are attached to the cordy tendinate or tendinous cords. And the tendinous cords is connected to the papillary muscle. And obviously the papillary muscle is the one that gives the strength to the valve through the cordy tendinate. If we scroll down, we can see that we have the chambers of the heart. We already mentioned that. We have two atriums and two ventricles. Right here in this figure, you can clearly see the four chambers, one, two, three, and four. And also you can clearly see the blood vessels. So you have in the right atrium, the vena cava, superior and inferior. Right here in the right ventricle, you can see how the pulmonary trunk is gonna be there. Right here you have the left atrium where you can see how the pulmonary veins are getting in there. You have two over here and then you have the other two that will go around this area. And then you have the left ventricle. It's not clearly in here depicted the aorta, but the aorta comes from here and goes like this and from here it goes up. Also, I already mentioned that the name of the blood vessel that will provide blood to your heart with nutritional purposes is going to be the coronary arteries. Now inside the heart, the atriums are not as smooth like a piece of paper, but rather has elevations and grooves, and these are called the pectinate muscles. Same way, the ventricles also are not flat, but rather it shows some internal ridges called the trabeculate cernae. If we could keep scrolling down, we can see that we have the valves we already mentioned. We have two valves in between the atriums and the ventricles, and we're going to find also two other valves, one inside the pulmonary trunk and the other one inside the aorta. And we mentioned that the valves that you have in between the atriums and ventricles are going to have certain strength provided by the papillary muscle through the thernus cord to avoid the blood going back up into the atriums. The names of these valves that you have in the aorta and the pulmonary trunk are called the semilunar valves valves. The blood that flows through the chambers of the heart, we said we have four chambers. It goes from one to two, from two to three, and from three to four.